Hallelujah. Praise God and welcome to a new episode of Rock of Ages. I hope you've had a wonderful week, blessed week, and I hope this message will bless you. As we all know, we are in this new wave of COVID and the country is under a lot of fear. We know that COVID is highly contagious. In Mizoram, when somebody arrives at the airport, they are tested for COVID. Even when they are tested negative, they are put under quarantine for at least seven days. They are put in quarantine because they can still be a carrier. Although they may be negative, but they can be a carrier. The reason why we are so fearful of this new COVID is that because it is highly contagious. It is more contagious than the previous strain. And because it is contagious, we are fearful. But one thing that is more contagious than the actual COVID virus is fear. I say this because there may be people who have contracted the virus, but even people who have not contracted the virus have contracted fear. Fear it instills, it, it comes into us because of our knowledge of COVID, because it is contagious. Today, I want, to, I want to send this message to all of you that each and every one of you is a carrier. Not of COVID, but of something else. And that's something else I want to share with you today. In Thessalonica, in 1 Thessalonica chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Paul says to the Thessalonians, We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering before our God, and Father, your works of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Faith, love, and hope. This is what they had. And this is what Paul gave thanks to God for. These three things. Today, I want to tell you that you are a carrier. You are a carrier of faith, love, and hope. You see, it says in verse 8, For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. The faith was so strong that when people saw that faith, they did not need to be preached the word because they saw it for themselves and they caught it. First, I want to talk about faith. Hebrews 11.1 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. The conviction of things not seen. The problem with most of us is that we live in a world where we see and in a world where we know. And we are not able to practice faith in its absolute sense. For me, if I want to buy something, I have a job, I have money. If I work, I can buy things. I don't need faith. So, how do I exercise faith? How do I understand faith? You know, when you surround yourself with people who are strong in faith, it's contagious. It is highly contagious. But for, for you to have, con but you need to have contact with people of high faith for it to be contagious. I have a friend who is a high school teacher. She has a wonderful relationship with God, such intimacy. I have never seen such intimacy anywhere else with anybody else. Her students always considered her subject to be the hardest subject. They thought that it's going to be the hardest subject that they will ever give in the board exams. But she prayed for them a lot. And then she gave them a mock test. And the most wonderful thing was that when they came out of the exam hall, they said that this was the best paper they had given. They were able to say this because the mock test she had given, the questions in her test were the same that came for the exam. All that question she gave came in the exam. This happened because she had faith in God. And I have never seen faith like hers. And when you are around her, when you speak to her, when you interact with her, 
you see how she stands in faith and you understand what it is. You may not know how to stand in faith yourself, but when you are around people who stand in faith, although you may not understand the intricacies of what they do, you will understand that there is a thing as standing in faith. And for people who are faithful, God is faithful to them. We have another, we have another ministry where the ministry workers are full-time workers of God. No job, no income. But God provides for them because they stand in faith. And when you are around these kind of people, you contract their faith. Faith is contagious. You can catch it. Instead of catching fear from people, catch faith. And when you are in Christ, instead of spreading fear, spread your faith. Second, labor of love. Now we all talk about love as if it's a feeling. Loving your friends, loving your family, loving God. In Mark chapter 12, verse 29 to 31, uh, 31 the scribe asked Jesus what the most important, the greatest law was. Jesus replied giving two commandments. Now the peculiar thing over here is in the English language, when you ask something which is the greatest, it refers to only one. But there was a reason Jesus gave the second commandment. The verse reads, Jesus answered, the most important is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbors as you love yourselves. There is no other commandment greater than these. Even if you look at this from a grammatic perspective, it does not say there are other commandments greater than these. It says there is no other commandment better than the, uh, greater than these. The reason Jesus spoke in this manner is because these two commandments are not separable. separable. They are one. And the reason why God gave the second commandment is because the first commandment was supposed to be so instilled in us. To make it more clear, let me give you an example. When you want to buy a new car, when you want to buy a new two-wheeler, a scooty or a bike, what are the things you look for? What are the things you use to judge before you buy them? Do you look at the color? Do you look at the model? The price? If it's a car, does it have a good sound system? Does it have good AC? You might look at all these things, but one thing that you never look at is whether the car is running or not. Can the car run or not? You never look at that. Because it is so given when buying a new car that it should be able to run, that while buying a new car, you never think of it. That is how instilled the first commandment is supposed to be in us. When we talk about Christianity, when we talk about love, Loving God should not even have to be spoken about. That is how instilled it should be. See, when you want to buy a car, you don't talk about whether it runs or not because it is given. You don't have to have a second thought about it. In the same manner, the first commandment, Jesus, if humans were perfect, let's just say if we were supposed, if we were in the state where God how God made us, then the first commandment, Jesus would never have to tell us the first commandment in the first place. But because we, did, we don't know it, we did not know it, He informed us. But what is more important for us is the second commandment, that we should be able to love our neighbors. See, when we preach, we preach from our mouths. But when by pre preaching in action means showing love. When we tell people of other religion about Christianity, we speak about Christianity, but we don't 
emphasize on loving them in action. And therefore, what we speak, it falls on deaf ears. Because you see, before they hear, they see. And if what they see does not go according to what they hear, it will not go well with them. And they will not understand it and they will not accept it. So before we preach the word of God, the word we tell anybody about the good news, what we have to do as Christians is to we have to practice love. And we always confuse love with this feeling. See, feelings are just based on chemical reactions but love is based on the Word of God. Love is a nature of God. It says in 1 John 4, 8, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. And once we know God, once we are born again, we are born again because of the love of God. And once we are born again, we have the seed of God in us. And this seed carries with it the nature of God. And once you have the nature, you don't have to keep trying. See, nature is such a wonderful thing, you know. Human beings, we have a certain nature. Animals have a certain nature. Human beings, when we are born, we don't need to be taught continuously how to walk. When we grow, you just nurture the baby, you feed the baby. Eventually, when he grows, he will walk. But even though, even though if you feed a dog, even though if you try to teach a dog for 10 years, he will not learn how to wash your dishes. But human beings, it is in our nature that we are able to learn these things. Whatever is not in our nature, we can never learn. Therefore, the seed of God is in us and that seed carries with it love. When we nurture this love through the Word of God, we are able to practice it. 1 John chapter 4, verse 12 says, No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and His love is perfected in us. That is how important loving others is. Being kind to others, being understanding of others, being forgiving of others being thoughtful of others. These are all different forms of love. So before we try to preach, show in your action, love. Now the third thing, Paul says, your steadfastness of hope. You know, if my father was the president of India, and if the police came tonight to arrest me, I won't be afraid of anything because I know that my hope lies in my father and that he's going to come through for me and that even though I might spend one night in the prison, even though I might spend one night, I will still not be afraid because I know when the morning comes, my father is going to come and get me out of that prison because he has the authority to do that. When we are in Christ, our hope is Christ. Our hope comes from Christ. We are in a situation where COVID is rampant. You might even contract it. But don't be afraid. Just like I'll never be afraid when I'm in prison for one night. You might have COVID for one week or something like that. But don't worry. Have faith in God. Have your hope. Your hope is in God. You will not be afraid. Because you know that whatever comes, God is going to come through for you when morning comes. You see, every situation that life deals you, every situation, every circumstance that you come across in life, you'll be, it's always an opportunity for two things. You can either be afraid or you can be brave. I want to tell you this, fear, fear is simply a state of mind. Now, I want you to understand this. When I say that fear is a state of mind, I do not disregard the fact that there are things that are dangerous. But simply because things are dangerous does not mean that we have to be fearful of them. A tiger, a lion, a bear, 
wild animals, carnivores, wild animals, they are all dangerous. I think we all agree on that. In an open field, you will never dare go close to a lion. You will not even go close to a deer. But when they are in a confinement, in a zoo, behind cage, you are not afraid of them, are you? That's because you have knowledge that you are protected. The tiger might be dangerous, but there is no fear in you because fear is a state of mind. Just like that, every opportunity, every circumstance, every situation in life is an opportunity for you to either have fear or be brave. The situation might be dangerous, just like how COVID is dangerous, but whether you fear it or not, completely relies on you. Wherever you go, wherever you go, fear will always follow you around. It's like a shadow. Fear is like a shadow which will never leave you. But it is your choice to look at that shadow or to, get the, to look at the light. You will understand in normal physics that where there is light, there is a shadow. But if you choose to look at the shadow, you will see your fear. You will see your incapabilities. You will see hardship. But when you look at the light, you will see God's glory and you will find strength in Him. And the thing is, when you move closer to the light, when you move closer to it, in physics, the shadow will become bigger. The shadow will simply become bigger. When you are trying to follow God more, the devil will work harder to pull you down. The closer you get to the light, the bigger the shadow. It is your choice. Are you going to look at the shadow or are you going to look at the light and find your strength there? In 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, it says, God is light. God is light. When Moses went to the mount, when, mount, when Moses went to Mount Sinai and he was face to face with God, he contracted the light. He, his face started to glow with the glory of God. Us as Christians, as newborn again, we are the light of this world. It says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, You are the light of this world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. You are the light of this world. And where the light exists, shadow cannot. You will see that a bulb or a tube light will never have a shadow of its own because it cannot have a shadow. Where there is light, there can be no shadow. An object which does not emit its own light will give out shadow, but an object which has its own light will never give out shadow. Once you are the light, fear will disappear. Once you are strong in the Lord, once you have your hope in the Lord, fear will disappear. It says in Psalm 119, verse 114, You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Our hope is in the word of God. That's where we derive hope from. And just like love and just like faith, hope is not a feeling. It is not a feeling of some happiness or some sense of security. It is not that feeling. It is knowledge. It is knowing God's word. See, happiness is a chemical reaction. When you are happy, if you have hope, you are happy. When you are crying also, you can have, you can have hope. When you are in depression also, you will have hope. And that hope is something that will make you survive it. Even in the most difficult times, when you are feeling alone, you will still have hope if you know the Word of God. What I'm trying to say is that your feelings may change, but hope is not determined by your feelings. 
it is from the Word of God. Faith comes from knowing God. Faith comes from knowing the Word of God. It is written in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So faith comes from hearing and hearing by the Word of Christ. When you read your Bible, when you understand Christ, when you understand the Word, it builds faith. And once you have faith, you won't fear the virus. You won't fear anything that comes at you in this life. When you have faith, you will have hope. Faith comes from knowing the Word of God. Hope comes from knowing the Word. And when you have faith and hope, you have these two things because you know God and love is God. Once you know God, you will have love. Mark 16 verse 15 says, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. These three are the basic foundation of the gospel. The gospel may be the message, but what the message carries with it is faith hope and love so friends today I ask you you are a carrier even though you may not be a carrier of the virus you are a carrier of many other things and those other things include love hope and faith be contagious be contagious while others are spreading fear Spread faith, love, and hope. Show in your life that you are a person in Christ. Have hope, have faith, and have love. They are highly contagious. See, the, word, the problem with us is that when we talk about these three things, we, we, tr we think that all of this is supposed to be just for us. You know, have faith so that God will work in my life. Have love for God and have hope in God. But the thing is, what we are supposed to do is we're supposed to emit this. When God flows in us, we are supposed to flow it out. So today I request and I pray that each of you, each of you will be contagious and you will spread love, faith and hope. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a blessed week and a blessed weekend. Thank you.